Kate BYP from the Little Shop of Engineering Horrors to explain to you the proper, what's commonly called loading of a, a tube amplifier. This generally doesn't apply to solid state because they tend to use outputs which are transformer coupled broadband. But in old rigs like this, with a plate and load control, and there's that's a pi network. Imagine a coil between the two knobs. The coil's tapped, so the inductor is not adjustable. In the merch matching network and similar, and in the Drake, the center knob is the uh, actually the uh, roller inductor, and all three can be adjusted. Most amplifiers use a tap coil, so we're just talking about plate and load controls. There was a ham, a VK, on the air a couple weeks ago, explaining with great confidence to his buddy how he had an 811 amp. I think he put 572s in it. He was underdriving it because it was overheating. And he was explaining that he knew how to correctly adjust the amplifier. He couldn't explain the overheating, so what he did was simply reduce the drive. Now, that's not a bad idea. There, there's no reason to run at the ragged edge and get the last 5 watts out of it because that risk may be peaks overdriving the plate. He described the common procedure of tuning it in CW, plate and load, and then switching to sideband and reducing the drive. Terrible mistake. That is the wrong procedure for phone. And here we have an indication of the problem. <clears throat> this operator began with a, and he was very well spoken, very polite conversation on the air, put on the air of knowing what he's talking about, talking about a complex problem with an amplifier, adjusting an output network that is a Pi network, a matching network. And I have information on this channel in great detail from engineering of how these matching networks work and how to calculate them with the magic formula. But he knows nothing about that. So his discussion, his topic of the proper way to adjust that output matching network, he declared that as a topic, but suddenly changed topics to an operator's viewpoint of adjusting knobs, and that's wrong. The topic is what's happening inside a network, what is it doing? And the real topic is why it is wrong to load it initially in CW and then change the phone. It must be rematched for phone operation, and I'm going to show you why from an example of plate curves for a 3-400. The purpose of the output matching network is to match the, let's assume, a 50 ohm dummy load that can take the amplifier power. Matching the output of 50 to the total resistance of all the tube plates in parallel. Uh, the plates might be 5,000 ohms each. Maybe there's four of them. Ideally, then, the total would be 5,000 divided by 4. The network must have an input image of 5,000 divided by 4 and an output image of 50. That's called a transform. And that agrees with the function of the, of the uh, transformers and the solid-state amplifier. That's also doing a transform. <laughs> The difference being in the solid state amplifier, the transformer is broad banded, where this is just the opposite. This Pi network operates near resonance, so it's relatively narrow banded. The initial procedure to find the initial settings for plate and load are to tune in CW. And if you'll if you have experience or if you'll read the, the instructions for the TR3, for example, <clears throat> you'll find that the that the procedure is not done. And the matching is not correct until the drive is full. Starts off, starts off with a little bit of drive to set the RF tune to maximum. And then incrementally increase the transmitter gain there on the left while dipping the plate, incrementally increasing the load to reach a rated plate current. Critical. The rated plate current will not necessarily be reached and the output matching network will not be correct, and the amplifier will not be efficient until A, the transmitter gain is correct, and B, the plate is dipped, and the load is at the correct value to set the output. 
If we reduce the transmitter gain setting and change a drive, the output network will be mismatched. And it will, guaranteed, result in inefficient mismatched operation of the amplifier and for the given drive setting, given that it's lower, so there's less total dissipation, the amplifier will be, will be mismatched and overheating for that drive level. And that's what that VK ham was seeing. Although he reduced the drive, it's still overheating and he had no clue why. That's because the output network is mismatched because he effectively matched it for maximum gain in drive in CW and then switched to phone, which is a lower duty cycle emission. The sideband and AM drive into an amplifier might be half of the drive level on CW. And the situation on the oscilloscope is this. The top is the CW envelope looking at the individual cycles. And the overall envelope at a slow sweep rate would be the two lines. You can't see the cycles. That's 100% drive. That literally corresponds to studying the transmitter gain to, to the point where increasing the transmitter gain does not result in any more plate current. That's a maximum drive. When we switch to voice or sideband, we get a modulation envelope. This is looking at low sweep rates at the audio sweep rate. The average energy in that uncompressed, unclipped envelope might be 20%. So that is effectively, over time, 20% of that. With modern radios and compression and clipping, those peaks up there are removed. And the average modulation average drive is considerably higher and there's the there's the reason why cw is supposedly more efficient than sideband it's not a matter of the efficiency it's a matter matter of the cw envelope causes the amplifier to output 100 percent of its power in theory while in voice it, it's much less so that's why it's common to have amplifiers on phone the required procedure the proper procedure is to load the transmitter so to speak in cw to get a baseline. Now here on 20 meters, plate six and three quarter load 2.8. And go through each band for your rig or amplifier, load it in CW into a proper 50 ohm load and record all the settings. So you don't have to go through and hammer on the tubes in the future trying to find them again. But it is not allowed to then switch to sideband with the same settings because the power output will be significantly different. The procedure on sideband is to retune the plate and load according to not the peak but the average reading meter speak some phrase like hello 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 continuously and that might strike up i don't know 50 watts let's say on the meter from this transmitter <clears throat> that's kind of sort of giving us an average of the voice envelope while watching that Retune the plate and the load for maximum indicated average. I'm, I'm going to say average peak. That's that's not technically correct, but that's what it really looks like. The the peak reading driven by your voice on an average reading meter. It while readjusting the output network and then record those settings. Now in this radio transmitter gain does something different in phone. Transmitter gain is drive in CW, but it's modulation mic drive in voice. So make sure it's the correct modulation level. It's not clipping the amplifier because that results in splatter. That is the correct way to do it for voice. Now the reason why is seen on the so-called plate curves. For the 3-400, for example, the x-axis is plate to grid voltage. This is for grounded grid. The vertical axis is filament to grid, which is cathode to grid voltage. <clears throat> so this is the swing of the input signal. In class B, we assume it's half cycle from zero to minus whatever. There's an assumption of 62 volts. That deflection on the grid results in a reduction in the plate voltage down to, let's say, a thousand volts. So with when we intersect a thousand volts on the plate and 62 volts on the grid, 
that gives us a plate current of d d d d d d d d 800 milliamp instantaneous. We make a dot there. Then we go over here under idle conditions, which are idle conditions are oh roughly 100 milliamp. It's supposed to be about 70, but who's going to who's going to argue with that? Roughly 100 mils at roughly let's call it 2 kV. We make a dot there and connect a line between the two. What that line represents is a plate resistance. That's under CW steady state conditions with a CW drive signal of peak 62 volts or peak to peak double that, which would be 124. And that just happens to be about what this is. In this TR3, it's roughly 120 to 140 peak to peak into the grids of the finals. That represents a, <clears throat> a resistive line. When the drive is reduced, let's say down to, let's say this is this is tuning in CW with a the same peak to peak voltage all the time. We go to a phone emission, and it might be half that. So, 25 volts might result in a <laughs> will result correction in a higher plate voltage because the lower grid voltage is not driving the tube so far into conduction. And the idle is still where it is. So there'll be a different line with a different tilt, and that represents a different resistance. That means instead of the plates being 5,000 ohms, they might be 7,000. So 7,000 divided by 4 is whatever it is, and it is no longer the same as 5,000 divided by 4 in CW. So for the same output network settings in CW, which are expecting a plate resistance of 5,000 divided by 4, now seeing 7,000 divided by 4, and it is grossly mismatched. And there is overheating of the amplifier. <clears throat> Pardon the East Tennessee sinuses. That's how you can magically drive it with less power but still get overheating. That also suggests insufficient improper airflow. That's a different topic. So that is the proper way to load an amplifier, particularly an RF power amplifier. And understand if it's mismatched, there's going to be overheating, inefficiency, distortion, possibly clipping. On the left is an unclipped sine wave. On the right, it's clipped. That happens in this radio when the idle bias is turned way down. I tried it. It's splattered or buckshotted badly. And what that is, and why we hear so many overmodulated splattering amplifiers on the air, is that they're overdriving <clears throat> and clipping against the rails, so to speak, against the limits of the power supply. And when that function goes square, that's highly nonlinear. And nonlinear systems do frequency mixing and generate lots of frequency components. And that's the buckshot that occurs in spectrum like this. You'll get buckshots out here. You'll get spikes that are not in the original modulation. <clears throat> so that makes another reason, another case for proper, also proper biasing and proper drive. So... Again, it is the wrong procedure to load that in CW and then switch the phone and call it good. So this is why being an operator is not good enough. This is why CB operators are not allowed to have power amplifiers. They know nothing about the proper way to operate and load them from the circuit, from the operating standpoint. All they do is push buttons. And this is a problem with so many hams but also have no technical knowledge. There are no code licensees and know nothing except how to turn knobs. And this is where these kind of gross mistakes come from. So there it is. Make your amplifier happy. Give it a long life. Load it correctly. KBYP.